Thanks for joining us today on HXGN TV. I'm your host, Kyle Phelan, and today we will be discussing how to scan a jet wing in four minutes or less. Joining me today is Brian Brown, the Director of Robotics and Automation of the National Institute for Aviation Research at Wichita State University. And from Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, we have Scott Everling, Business and Product Development for Integrated Solutions, and Cliff Bliss, the 3D Optical Sensor Product Manager. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thank Thanks you. for having us. So Brian, I'm going to start with you. Can you tell the audience a little bit about the National Institute for Aviation Research? The National Institute for Aviation Research, NIAR, is basically a, uh, a aerospace research wing of WSU or Wichita State University. We focus primarily on aviation research and research for industries and companies to do applied research and applied education and applied learning. We don't necessarily focus on fundamental research, so we won't necessarily create anything new, but what we'll do is we'll take existing products, such as the Hexagon products, and apply them in new and unique and different ways. What is the role that the Robotics and Automation Group fills at NIAR? Basically just that, it's, it's we help automate processes for companies. Aviation in the aerospace market is somewhat slow to adopt automation and slow to adopt uh, the, the methods of automation like unlike automotive and some of the other consumer good industries. So what we're there to do is we're there to help introduce automation and show them just exactly what's possible when you start automating some of these processes. Now touching on the relationship that you have with Hexagon, what are some of the projects and initiatives that you've been working on? So we've done a number of different projects with Hexagon. We've done a lot of small one-off type projects of can it be done or, or could it be done type of projects, as well as some of the bigger projects such as the scanning of the jet wing and the composite repair and things like that. So we basically help them out in, a, in an academic setting where we can utilize students and utilize undergraduate students, graduate students to help figure out some of these fundamental basic problems and just see how we can automate and how we can make a product better for our client or our customer. Well, that's great to get the students involved for sure. Uh, the scanning of the jet wing has certainly grabbed a lot of attention. What were the driving factors behind this demonstration? So for that, basically Scott and these guys came to me and, and said, hey, you know, we've got a customer, they're interested in scanning a, a large aerospace component, such as a wing, and they'd like to be able to do it quickly and efficiently, and they'd like to be able to see this actually happening, because it's one thing to always talk about and try to, to advertise that, yes, this can be done, but to actually get to see it happen is a unique thing. So what we did is we took, essentially, a small biz jet wing, something that we had at one of our other facilities, our full-scale structural facilities, and brought it into the lab and said, okay, let's, let's set it up and let's just show this customer what it takes to do this type of large-scale component scanning. And Scott, what challenges did you face getting the system to scan a jet wing in four minutes or less? Yeah, I think um, what we thought were going to be the problems when we started the project turned out not really to be large problems. And uh, as Brian mentioned, they, they had an extra wing jet sitting in the back that they had done structural testing on. And so we didn't have a CAD model for the system. Uh, it wasn't to nominal anyway since it had been stressed under uh, different tests. And really, the, I think the expectations from the customer themselves and the industry in general, um, you know, really trying to reach out to those groups and find where they wanted to go, what they needed for inspections off the system. And so, uh, you know, when we first started it, we thought it was going to be more the integration side of it, but I think as, as Brian can maybe attest to, the integration piece itself, I think, was, was very straightforward and very quick. Uh, we ended up being there for, I think, a total of three days. Uh, a day to prep, a day to shoot the video that's uh, on YouTube, and a day for the customer to come in. Uh, Brian, can you add to that? No, that is correct. So essentially we took, we took a tracker that we already had in-house, we took a T-scan that we already had in-house, and we took robots that were already existing. So I mean, essentially we were able to replicate a situation that the customer might already be in, that they already have a tracker, they already have a robot, they just want us to figure out, can we put these two together to make them scan these large components? And that's basically what we did, is we, we set the tracker up, we got it integrated with our robot, our ABB robot, rather quickly. And from there, it was our challenge to be able to program this thing rather rapidly, just because we didn't want it to take 100 hours to program to run a 10 minute, or in this case, a, a three and a half minute job. So we essentially figured out ways that we could program it within just a few hours, a little bit of coding on the software side, and we had a presentation ready for the customer really quickly. Yeah, I jump in there. I, I really think um, one of the things that we thought would take a long time was the programming. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, uh, the way that the T-Scan works on the tracker 
really mimics a lot of the painting applications. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the tools within the robot made it uh, quite easy at the end of the day to, to do that. That's exactly right. And after it was all said and done, what were the end takeaways from this demonstration? What benefits or advantages were exposed to the process? So when you look at you know, some of the changes in the industry and, and the new uh, requirements that, the, that, they're re, that they're looking to get out of hexagon metrology and, and systems in general uh, are new that really haven't been tackled before. And uh, for this project, for instance, it was the waviness and the extraction of the features. And both those requirements really pushed us to have a high density data set. Um, and it really, I think, drove the T-Scan as a final solution combined with the tracker on the distances. Brian, you also discussed using portable measurement solutions in the field to make more effective repairs. How did this problem come into focus for your group? So, so that's a slightly different project that we work on. That was a project involving composite repairs. So a lot of aircraft these days are pushing more and more towards composite skins and composite structures just because they're lighter, they're, they're better to work with, better fuel efficiency and everything else. So for that project, we engaged with, with Cliff and the White Light Group and we said, hey, you know, we need a solution that we can work with in the field or on the tarmac or in a hangar, and we need to be able to analyze this damaged area and get actual quantifiable data out of it because currently they're doing all this by hand, and so they're doing hand measurements, they're doing hand drawings, they're doing hand type work. And me being a CAD guy, me being a reverse engineering guy, I wanted to be able to quantify that and give them actual empirical data on what this was. So with that, what we did is we engaged the white light scanning group and we said, okay, we want to be able to scan this region and scan this damaged area. And then from that, automate the task of creating a repair patch that can go back on the airframe and basically give us a, a stronger patch, a better patch, a patch that fits the damaged spot perfectly and do it much quicker. Because anytime an airplane is sitting on the ground and, and passengers are waiting, or they wouldn't necessarily wait on that, but anytime that aircraft is sitting on the ground and they can't be flying passengers, that's, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money to an aircraft or right. to an aircraft industry. And Cliff, what were the benefits of using that Q-Flash uh, 3D system? Well, the benefits of the Q-Flash is that it's truly a shop floor solution, meaning that it's impervious to vibrations it acquires data very quickly, so vibration does not affect the system. So it can also be handheld. Um, the system was also designed to be very portable. So you could very easily put it in a Pelican case and take it to the job. Instead of taking the measurement to the measurement device, we take the measurement device to the job. Uh, it also uh, utilizes blue light technology, so we do not have to rely on ambient light. So that helps out tremendously, and it also has temperature compensation, so the optics stay true. Are there any other problems in the aerospace world that could be solved using this technology? Oh, sure, it's been uh, utilized throughout industry or worldwide. Uh, it's uh, faster flushness, uh, we do uh, IR door fits, uh, we do uh, predictive shimming, uh, CMM augmentation. There's a long list of uh, applications because it fits very well. You can bring it right to the flight line and you can acquire the data without having to remove uh, the people working on the plane. Well, guys, uh, thanks for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. To learn more about NIAR, visit nyar.wichita.edu. To tune into additional episodes of HXGN-TV, log on to hxgntv.com. Thanks for watching.